In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Hercules five inch deep cut variable speed battery operated bandsaw. This is a new saw that has just been released from Harbor Freight and it was kind of hard for me to track one down but i did find one at a nearby harbor freight store so i went and purchased it myself yes this is not a sponsored video so this review is 100 percent my honest opinion on this saw Before I tear into this box, there are a few things that I want to point out. And first, this is the tool only. It does not come with a blade, a battery, or a battery charger. It does use the 20 volt Hercules lithium ion batteries. And right here in a big, bright, bold yellow font, it says use a five amp hour battery or greater for maximum performance. And then the most intriguing thing on this box, something I'm not used to seeing on Harbor Freight products, is right here in the corner, it says that it has a five year warranty. All right, so I opened up the box and they weren't joking. This is the tool only. There's nothing in the box other than the saw and some instructions. So the first thing I noticed after getting this thing out of the box and unwrapped from the plastic is that this is a hefty saw. It weighs in at 14.3 pounds and that is without a battery installed on it. And speaking of batteries, I'm gonna be using this Hercules eight amp hour lithium ion battery for all of the testing today. And yes, I purchased this one myself because this is not a sponsored video. When I put the battery and the saw back on the scale, it came in at 16.8 pounds. That may sound like a lot, but those older corded Bauer porta bands that I have been using for the past six years also weigh 16.8 pounds. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the saw. The first thing that kind of stands out to me is this adjustable guide plate right here. This is nice because you just push this button in and it unlocks and you can move it to adjust the height. And that's nice because on the older saws you had to have a hex wrench and you had to loosen a screw in order to move this. This is no longer the case. And it does seem to have, I believe, about three different locking positions that it will go into. Another nice feature on this saw is that it has a clicking speed adjust wheel. I don't know if you can hear that but that will help hold it into place. I do know on my older Bauer saws that if they vibrated a lot, this would tend to move on the speed adjust. Also, this is a cordless tool. So one thing that it has that the older saws don't have is a trigger lock, because I guess with it being cordless, you don't want this to be thrown in your toolbox and then have a screwdriver or something, a hammer kind of push up against this and turn it on while it is in storage. And speaking of storage, it has this neat little hang hook right here that you can use to store it. And then there's also an LED. This is something new that the older saws did not have. And the other thing that I have noticed is right here this little bump protector on the older saws was a rubberized coating and on this saw it is just a hard plastic and if i flip the saw over on the other side you can see they have added these plastic wheel guards on here and to me at first it kind of seems like a good idea because they just kind of slide in place and they protect anything like your fingers or something else from getting in here and getting jammed also if you break a blade it's not going to come flying out as easy but it seems to me that these might hold the sawdust into the saw. So this is something I need to keep an eye on and we will definitely check that out during testing. And if I zoom in here real close, you can see they have also added a brush that cleans the wheel as it spins. And last but not least, let's add a blade to the saw and we will just stick with the Hercules line. I'm going to put a 44 and 7 8 inch Hercules 18 tooth blade on this saw. There is one other thing I wanna point out about this saw and that is the bolt pattern for the handle and also here for this sliding plate. They are different from the old Bauer saws. So if you're like me and you've made yourself a little bandsaw table or some type of fixture like I have, this saw is not going to just bolt into place. It's gonna require some modification to use it with your existing fixtures. Okay, so this saw is ready to start making some cuts. I've got the battery, the blade installed. 
Let's give it a little test on the motor here. The trigger is variable speed, so let me just slightly pull on the trigger. And then full blast. Then back to slowing down. And then off, I also see that the LED works. So let's start cutting some stuff with it. All right, so the first thing on the chopping block is a piece of inch and a half steel pipe with a 1 8 inch wall. Let's see how well this cuts it. All right, so it chewed through that like it was nothing. That was the actual cut speed there. I did not speed that video up. It went right through that pipe like it was nothing. Let's try something bigger. Next on the chopping block is some two and a half inch galvanized steel. This is actually a piece of my carport that got blown away back in the spring. I did save a few pieces of it, but let's see how well this saw will cut through it. No surprises there, it chewed right through that two and a half inch galvanized steel like it was nothing. All right, so I went digging around the shop and the biggest piece of steel I could find was this four and a half inch piece of round steel and it does have a quarter inch thick wall. And if you remember, Harbor Freight said that its saw has a five inch cut width. So let's see how well it will cut this four and a half inch quarter inch thick round steel. So it chewed right through this pipe like it was nothing. And remember, this is four and a half inches wide and it has quarter inch thick walls. Let me see what else I can find that would be interesting to cut with this saw. Next on the chopping block is some rectangular tube. It is two inches by three inches and I believe it's an eighth of an inch wall thickness. Let's see how well the saw will cut it. No surprises here, it cut through that with no issues. Okay, so this thing has cut every piece of steel that I have thrown at it so far with no issues. So let's just jump right to a piece of railroad track. Let's see how well this saw will cut a piece of railroad track. And there you have it, a piece of railroad track with absolutely no issues. It cut right through that like it was nothing. 
If you noticed in the video, I did have to stop mid cut and pull the saw back some, and that's because that blade guide will get hung on this ledge of the railroad track if I do not do that. But other than that, it went right through this piece of railroad track with no issues at all. Okay, so if we look in the front of the saw underneath these wheel guards, you can see there is hardly any sawdust in here. And that's to be expected because the blade pulls most of the sawdust toward the rear of the saw. So let's take that rear cover off and take a quick look. And if we take a quick look here at the rear of the saw, you can see there is some sawdust back here, but not a whole lot. But like I said, that's to be expected because the blade spins and it pulls all of the sawdust into the rear of the saw. So yeah, I guess these blade guards or wheel guards, whatever you want to call them, are a good addition to this saw. So I just want to wrap things up and say that I really do like this saw. This is a great little saw. They've made a lot of improvements to it over the older Bauer saws. And I really like all of those improvements. They've done a really good job uh, with this saw. And the main thing that I like is that it is cordless. I like these Hercules batteries and the fact that this doesn't have a cord and it's not any heavier or bulkier than their corded version of this saw. I do want to point out that if you have a upright table, something that holds your saw like this, where you can use it like a, an upright band saw, like one of the ones that I have built on a previous video, that these bolt patterns on the handles do not line up and also the bolt pattern here on this little guide plate, that does not line up. So if you've got one of those, this won't just bolt into place. You will have to make some modifications. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please smash that like button. Give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.